we will now study what are called systems. In this context, the system is an entity that acts on an input signal and creates an output signal. So for example, if this is the in system, it has an input signal over here, and it acts on the input signal and creates an output signal like that. Now, in general, we could have a set of inputs rather than just one input, and we could have a set of outputs. So in general, these are vector inputs and vector outputs. So it's a vector output and a vector input. And uh, by convention, the vector input is represented as x, and the vector output is represented as y. And um, I will use x and y with that little arrow on top of it to indicate it's a vector. And later on, we will uh, work with scalars mostly, but just for the general purpose, we should call it a vector in a general case. Uh, the function, so the, the system over here really is uh, operating on a vector, which is a function of time and it creates another output as a function of time as well. So, in fact, it transforms a vector function to another vector function, but these are functions of time. So, for example, we might think of the input as being some kind of signal like this, and the output being some other signal like this, and we're trans translating this input signal, this is of course a scalar function of time, but it could be a vector, into that output signal. Now, uh, for convenience, I'm going to sort of abuse terminology a little bit and call this function over here h, and we'll call this the transfer function. Uh, in fact, the, uh, this, the meaning of a transfer function is, uh, is uh, something slightly different, and we'll study that in more detail when we study control theory. But for now, we want to, uh, as I said, abuse terminology, and we're going to say that the transfer function converts the uh, h, the uh, transfer function h converts the input function x t into the output function y t, and so we can write y t equals h of x t. Okay, so this is then our model of a system. Uh, from our, for all practical purposes, uh, what we mean by the system is is h, and that is the system. It is a it is a function that operates on a function and generates a function. So that's that's what a system is. Now, when studying systems, we have two problems that we have that we want to typically understand. One is called the analysis problem, and the analysis problem says, given a particular system, how does it behave? More particularly, if I have a system, if it gets a particular input, so I have the system over here and I know h for in some fashion, and I'm going to give it some value x, and I want to know what the value y is going to be. So I want to predict the output y given an input x, and that's called analysis. And the other one is called the design or synthesis problem. And the design problem basically says that I know why, I know what, uh, sorry, I know what the input uh, uh, input and output are. I know x and I know y, and I want to design h so that it achieves the appropriate uh, value y. So to give a very, very practical example, let's say that we have a car traveling on a bumpy road. And so if you were to look at this as time, and this was the displacement of the passenger d uh, with respect to time. So if it's a bumpy road, every pothole is going to result in sort of the passenger uh, oscillating uh, uh, on the seat, as it were. Um, but what we want to do is to design a system which is which is smoother. So we want the output to be as nearly steady as we possibly can. And so we want to know what is the function h such that we can translate this noisy signal, this bumpy signal into the smooth signal, and that would be the design problem. Um, we are going to uh, not uh, focus on design now, but when you sort of control systems, we will actually look at designing specific control uh, systems in order to achieve certain control objectives. Okay, so this is just the outline of systems, and next we're going to study how we can categorize different kinds of systems.